For the latest top tips, reviews and advice, please subscribe below. Hello and welcome to Atwalls Outdoors with me, Mike. Today we guys a bit of a review video on a new tent from Dometic. So with me here, I've got the Dometic Bora K 401TC. So the Bora K was basically introduced into Dometic's new tent range for 21. 22 is basically they kind of carried on but made a new size. So the 401 almost kind of complements the 301 size uh, to give you something a little bit bigger. Um, and actually to be fair, I think I in many ways I almost prefer it to kind of the 301, just having a little bit more extra space, uh, which we'll look through the video, uh, and generally it kind of sits nicer, a good sort of pitch size. So we're looking at, uh, it's a three meter wide tent, about two meters height in the roof. So it's a small but big tent in the same way. It's obviously made from polycotton, a TC fabric. So it's basically technical cotton. Uh, and what it allows you to do is have that breathability. So on a warm day like today, it's a lot cooler on the inside because the weave can expand and allow air to pass through. On a cold day, it contracts and keeps the warmth in. So you get the best of both worlds. Naturally, you find it's actually a quieter fabric in the wind because it's not sort of synthetic. It's a sort of almost a throwback to that typical kind of canvasy kind of feel. Feels beautiful and generally sits a lot nicer uh, as well as actually having a longer lifespan as well. Some of the drawbacks to kind of polycotton as a whole, A, it's more expensive. Immediately you pay for what you get. B, it's a little bit weighty. So I mean, to be fair, something this sort of size weighs about 33 kilograms, which for me, I think is actually quite a reasonable size, especially with the quality and some of the features they've got built into it, all adds weight to it. And it does take a little bit long to dry out, but for me, you know, it's no, thank you. So always make sure you wanna make sure the kit's dry before you pack it away anyway. If not, get it up as soon as you can get home really. One thing Dometic have really done with their sort of tent range is make sure they've almost kind of created a range that has every single feature it has to throw in its arsenal. So almost irrespective of price, it's just about quality and also about being, like I said, feature rich. So there's some things on here that you necessarily wouldn't see elsewhere. Things like these are to mention the fact that obviously the shape is quite iconic. It's certainly become something a bit different, very boxy to give you great internal headroom height. And we'll see that when we go inside. Other things you see is, is kind of, they've almost got like a throwback to kind of the old realm days with this kind of pole thing at the back. So it's just a single aluminium pole that goes up, gives you increase the height at the back of the tent. And that helps to give you a rear storage section, as well as meaning you can actually use um, like camp beds and stuff at the back because it doesn't tailor off so much. It's a quite a clever way of doing it. You've got webbing straps located all the way around it to get the ultimate amount of kind of stability against the wind. And you've got that kind of, uh, single point pegging point as well. So it means that one point pegs the base and the guy point and you've got adjusters quite nice and neatly. It's the fine details you see in this. So you've got little reflecting strips as well. So when you've got people coming with torches, you can quite clearly see where they are. A little even things like little tidies for the excess of the actual uh, point as well. So you can just feed that directly on, keeps it neat and tidy. And it's not gonna sort of suddenly then flap around. Other things to bear in mind is there's quite a good amount of ventilation in here. So you've got a big, low level ventilation to help circulate those airs and a big vent also at the back. There's little quirky little features, things like um, for access to the tubes, you've got obviously a little kind of gusset, should we call it, but when you don't want to use it, you've got little poppers. So you can kind of keep it back at bay, quite nice and smart and it sort of sits in quite nice and neatly. Each beam's done individually and you can pitch this tent quite happily on your own in the best part of sort of 10 minutes. We've done our own kind of like tutorial video about pitching this tent, where it's just me gassing on for God knows how long. It took a bit longer just because I'm trying to explain it and say what I'm doing in the manner of what I'm doing it as well. But even at its worst case scenario, it was 18 minutes of me talking and going through stuff. So it's a great tent for a weekend use, or if you want something a bit longer, you can quite happily do that as well. There's an optional extras you can look at with the tent as well. So you can go down lines of a footprint ground sheet, which I would definitely recommend. An internal carpet to add insulation and warmth. Um, but also an additional front extension or canopy. Well, canopy really. So it's an open canopy at the front. Again, just elongates tent to make it a bit bigger. Um, and that way you take kind of a, a small weekend tent into something a bit more manageable and having that kind of sheltered cooking area out the front. Other things to mention is the fact you've also got beautiful crystal clear PVC windows and mesh panels above it as well to get the flexibility of ventilation. Um, but sort of PVC blinds behind it to get you know, sealed up when you need it to. 
you've got one aluminium pole again on the front here to create this canopy, and there's even a little separating separator bar, bracer bar, I think it words out, just to kind of keep that really nice and taut, and like a drum, but a support against the flex as well. As we kind of come round to the front door, we can see we've got obviously two nice big PVC windows, and then the front door as well. Quite quirkily enough, which you don't see too often, is actually the front door's got a window built into it. So if you wanted the door completely shut, you're not getting that visual block. All of the front panels come with zip-up curtains, which we'll see on the inside in just a moment. A really nice big ventilation door as well to get mesh door to get the airflow into the tent, and also a mesh on the top. And later on in the video, we'll pick the camera up and kind of have a little walk through and around the actual tent itself. Other unique features to this tent are things like the um, guided pegging points. So you've got these little kind of orange tabs at the main four corners, and that signifies that you've got to peg those bits first and then pump up from there, as seen from the videos. One second. Other things you can also see is you've got um, kind of guided folding lines. So there's a little kind of uh, orange tab here, and it's to signify that you fold the back into there, and that gives you a width for the bag. And merely that thing in particular, I find a bit useless just because I wouldn't pack a tent in that manner. As you can see from our pitching videos, we do it in a different way. So it's something that I feel for me is not necessarily any use, but hey, it's on the tent as well. But I'll tell you what, let's have a little look inside the tent, get a bit of a feel for the space you've got in there and talk through a lot more of the features that it has to offer. So now at the front of the tent, you can kind of get a bit more of a sort of front on view to it as such. Um, so what we do is open up the mesh door and sort of enter in. One other thing I do like about kind of the way it's designed is even that all the pullers itself have got a kind of like a, should we say like a Tobrun kind of style grip, it makes it easy to put sort of open as such and you've got it on both sides. Especially with gloves, I feel it's a bit, even if it's wet, you can quite easily get a decent sized grasp on it. All the retaining clips you see on the door sections as well are kind of webbing straps and they've all got their own individual buckle. So it's not kind of a case of, you know, a bit of elasticated in a sort of, well, a toggle, nice and easy, you can clip it in, you've got loads of kind of excess and you can tension it as well, it means it's never gonna be too much fabric there. Even the small touches, like even the bottom section here is made out of polycotton rather than kind of polyester. It's, that's one thing that's a theme throughout the actual tent itself. The front lip, as you can see here, has got a Velcro, Velcro lid hit on there and that will Velcro quite happily to the mesh door to give you that ultimate seal. What you can also do as well is zip it up to give you that kind of bathtub feel. Alternatively, take that down, peg it down, and then you've got quite literally a lip-free access into the actual tent itself. When we come into here, you can see obviously the headroom height initially for me being about six foot two. I can stand up in the middle. And surprisingly, actually when I go in the corners, we're also not too hinged. I can stand up, okay, I'm just touching the roof there. But bear in mind, it's quite a small tent with a small footprint. I think it's actually very generous in terms of the height, and that comes down to kind of the general shape of it as well. In the back section, when we kind of here, you've got kind of an ample living area, certainly enough for a couple of chairs and a table. When you move on kind of into the uh, living uh, sleeping area, you've got essentially a four berth, so it's a two and a two with a divider between it to make it um, physical divider, which you can zip back open to make it one big four berth if you wanted to. Other things to mention is that, like I said, all the curtains on the inside, so wherever you've got these beautiful PVC windows, you've got zip-up curtains to get the privacy when you want it to, and then big pockets underneath as well, so you can just kind of bung it in there, and then a little toggle, toggle to kind of retain it, or pop it, I should say. So you've got all these little things, there's popper central around here, and that's evident as well. So even things like the hanging point for a lantern is a little metal carabiner clip, which, again, you don't really see anywhere else. And again, poppers, which allow you to have the cables quite nice and neatly down to the cable entry points on both sides. So regardless of which way the mains cable is coming in from or the hookups on, you can quite happily accommodate it. You've got a great sort of interior height and you can stand up quite easely in the bedrooms. And once you're inside the bedrooms, you've got certainly more of a darker material. Other things is really nice is touches like the little kind of storage pockets built into the front of it. And it's almost palmet kind of style, which just hides kind of the toggle points and just neatens everything all up. There's an overlap with the ground sheet and the internet as well, again, to try and make it feel almost enclosed. And through the back, which we'll come to when I pick the camera in a second, you've got um, obviously a bit rear storage compartment, which makes quite a difference. But let's get a better feel, bring the camera in. Now, 
will follow Arch. So you got your dog tent right at the back, apparently, for him if he wants to. Um, but yeah, kind of as we come through the door, you can kind of get at that sort of power out view, as you can see. Really nice crystal clear windows. You've got the mesh on the top section, which can just be quite easily zipped up. And it's the fine touches that you've got. Also, um, a little bit of extra plastic kind of overlaps and stops the water coming in. So you've got flexibility. This really nice kind of curved window. And for me, the kind of the brownie mocha kind of color, I think looks really quite smart. You can see obviously from a space point of view, it's not the biggest, but then it's a small tent. What else do you expect? The top vent located there with that additional brow pole kind of keeps that sitting really nice and smart as well. Storage pockets, as we've talked about, is not only in the front of the bedroom, but also in the side of the bedroom, as we can see here. So that's the same on both sides. At the front, we've got in, actually a full on mesh door built into it with a uh, mesh top part, which you can cover up so you can get obviously ventilation into the main body uh, and also allows a bit of lighting because the bedrooms are quite dark to be fair. The zip divider between the sections can come and roll back and it's little again popper points as you can imagine to roll that back and keep it nice and neat. We go down into the rear storage section. It's quite sizable and because of actually the kind of the height in here I can just about stand up with a little bit of a lean so it makes things quite nice and simple. Great to basically declutter the tent itself that means you actually have your living area as a living space. You've got access points on both sides. And as you can see, because you've got an overall quite a lot of depth here, as we look out, it means high-rise camp beds can quite happily, if need be, poke out the top or go into the bedroom itself. So that is also a nice bonus. Rear ventilation right in the back panels as well to really help sort of airflow and keep it a lot cooler. Other things to mention as well is there's a, diff a wardrobe pole clip located here and here, so you can actually have a wardrobe pole hanging up in the actual bedroom itself. We'll come out and have a little bit of a 360 round it. But yeah, it's that kind of, kind of mocha colour I think does look really quite sharp. And even those kind of windows I think looks really a nice little bit of kit as well. Lots of storm shelves back, like I said, to give it that ventilation and obviously to get it rigid. And those kind of very smart kind of poles just increase that height and you can see where say, it might slope off in comparison to a lot of other tents. You haven't really got that with this. And that's why just a small little design feature like that can suddenly you know, increase your actual usability space a lot, lot more. So I think overall, I think the 401TC is a really nice addition to the range. And to be fair, if we kind of reflect on kind of its sort of sister brand, which is Camper, when we take the Breen, often we find the Breen 4 is more popular than the 3 just because it's more ideal for couples with a bit more extra space or small families who want to take it away for short periods of time. So I think for me, the probably the four will actually be more popular than the three, um, but it's a nice offering. And for those people who want just that extra bit of room or a bit of versatility, I think it kind of just ticks a few more boxes. But yeah, if you want more information, of course, about the kind of Bora KTC, uh, by all means check the link below. It'll take you straight through to the product itself. Uh, where we've got all the sort of the package deals and prices, weights, dimensions, uh, floor plans, everything's all kind of there. So you can kind of make a bit more of an informed decision. But overall, really nice tent, high end features, quality seems really good as well. Um, but yeah, certainly one to watch out for the 22 season going forward. So by all means, let us know what you think of the tent as well. Comment in the box below. Uh, and we'd always love to hear from you guys. But in essence, that is the Dometic 4K 401. TC tent.